النساء ويتم أطفالهم راب ريني Eternal Planner. You know what brings me back to my high school days? I remember uh, my friend Brian used to invite me over to the house, and he'd be like, "Let's put, let's watch some Mystery Science Theater." It would be on the Sci Fi Channel. There would be these guys sitting in this fake theater and watching this black and white movie, and it was the cheesiest movie. It was like, if you can remember the days when, if there was a monster in the movie, they would use like a like a toy. And they would like blow up the image so it looked really big, almost like Godzilla or something like that. Really, really cheesy movies, and they would be cracking these funny, funny jokes during the movie, and I thought it was hilarious. Um, these guys are still around. They are doing riff tracks. Um, riff tracks are the same thing, except they comment during uh, new releases, films that are coming out today, and they are still just as funny as they were before. So I recommend going to eternalplanner.com/slash riff tracks. R I F F. T-R-A-X and getting yourself some riff tracks and you trust me you you won't be sorry um, we're here with our guest Kay Brown uh, she's host of the journey to the cross and beyond on 103.7 FM uh, mellowradio.com and uh, we're just talking about her testimony of faith I mean she's a former Jehovah Witness uh, but she kind of was kicked out of the Kingdom Hall for fornication and uh, she was kind of like the black sheep of the family and uh, she became a nurse. She got married. She got uh, had two daughters. But at the same time, she was having suicidal thoughts, depression, postpartum depression. And um, this was about the time when she was searching for through other religions like Mormonism, like Nation of Islam. And uh, Kay, you were just about to tell us about your experience with Rastafarianism. Yeah, that was a little earlier. That was college days, too. That lasted probably about four years. Stop eating meats. Um, but in the back of my, well, now let me say this: there's different tribes because there are some tribes of um, Rastafarianism that actually believe in Jesus and follow Jesus. So it's kind of like Christianity, where you've got your Baptists, um, your your Apostolics, your your Episcopal. It's kind of like that. Um, but I actually associated with one of the more radical tribes. They call them Bubble Dreads. And this whole, they have this whole concept, too, of no part of the world type thing. Okay. Um, and it was a boyfriend that I followed in, into that. <laughs> I love the boys. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I was always just attracted to the culture and the hair. And um, <laughs> no, just, just, wait, <laughs> are they, is it, is it a Jamaican thing? Is that what it is? It is, it is not just a Jamaican thing. They do have a strong presence there, but that religion has spread all over the world um, in, in, other, in other islands as well, and as well as the U.S., and not just with black people. You probably have right now more white Rastafarians than, than you do black because they are attracted to the culture. And honestly, some people are just attracted to the weed smoking. That, That's what I was going to say. <laughs> yeah. But see, here's the thing. When you talk about God and God blocking me, it's just not something, even as a Jeho as a, um, excuse me, Rastafarian, I couldn't smoke weed. It wasn't my thing. And the boyfriend I had didn't want me to smoke it either. So again, I love God. <laughs> you know, <laughs> he like kept he you from really, it. Yeah. <laughs> Did your boyfriend at the time to smoke weed? Oh, all day. All <laughs> oh, day. no. Night and day. Sun up to sundown. Oh, man. All day. He's since um, passed away. Oh, I'm from, sorry to hear from that. Lung cancer, yeah. Yeah. From lung cancer. Yeah. Is that a lesson to you guys out there for who are Rastafarians? Do not continue in that lifestyle. First of all, what is the religion aspect of it besides smoking weed? Do they believe in some deity at all or what? They believe that Hail Selassie or Rastafari, who was um, probably 
maybe early than the 60s, he was like the, the ruler of Ethiopia. They believe that they believe that he's God. And he's the, 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 um, the tribe that I had affiliated with, they, they called him God because the, um, you're into politics and all this government stuff. Yeah. League of Nations had appointed him um, Prince of Peace and Lord of Lords. You know, he was a very um, big on activism in his country, um, kept certain type of colonialism out of the country. So because he, they said, well, that's proof that he's God because they do read the Bible. You know, they take verses of the Bible. They're big on Psalms and, and Proverbs and those type of scriptures. And so they said that that pointed to him being Messiah. Now, Rastafari, or Hail Selassie, as they called him, was himself a Christian. Sorry for any Rastafarians. Listen, <laughs> you need to know the truth. Rob's show is about spreading the truth. That's and right. So they don't want to know this, but they chose to call a man. When you think about black people and, and, and oppression, if I can go there, even sure. in Jamaica, where it's predominantly black, but it was ruled by a colonial country, um, they, you just want something to relate to and something to believe in. So that's why it was easy for them to see this, this black man on the, on the, the that day when he was a Christ believing follower of Jesus Christ. When he visited Jamaica in the sixties and he came off the plane and saw all the Rastafarians and bowing down to him and pretty much like worshiping him. You should look it up, Rob. He ran back on the plane. Wow, this guy's name is Rastafari? Right, yeah, Tafari. Now, I will tell you this, just a little bit of history. Um, when, he, when Queen of Sheba, when she came to see Solomon, she, she went home with a baby in the belly. And she brought that faith back. So that's why even now you've got Ethiopians that are, um, they're Jews. They've been, you know, hidden away practicing that Jewish religion for years because it was brought back. And he is from that line. So if he does trace his descendants, he is an offspring of King David because David had a lot of, I'm sorry, Solomon had a lot of wives. Right. She visited him because she wanted to see his glory. And if he was really wise, she stayed for a while. She was on the king's bed and went home with the king's baby. Well, so it's uh, th wait. Does it does it say that though? Because I just re I recall reading that recently. I, I do remember what the scriptures you're talking about, but I don't know if it actually specifically says that she was it pregnant. Specifically say that. So let me thank you. I stand corrected, but you can kind of gather. But it, it does kind of, the scripture does kind of point to she took that faith home, and now when they're finding Jewish people living in 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 villages in in in, in Ethiopia with the religion preserved, you know they they. They flew a lot of them back to um, Israel on uh, wings, wings of Eagles, that, that thing where the Christians really support the whole move of bringing um, the Jewish people back into the land. Right. There's a lot of them that have gone back, and they, they've preserved that religion for years. So by word of mouth and how it, how it was preserved and came through to them was traced back to her. And, That's and interesting. I mean, it's an interesting idea. Uh, it's a possibility for sure. Maybe the Bible doesn't specifically state that, but maybe yeah. we can infer that. I don't know, um, based on what, what we see in Ethiopia.